Hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. I'm trying to stay in the shade here. It's really sunny, high peak summer day here in Colorado Mountains. We're actually having a heat wave. It is in the 80s here in the mountains, which is pretty unusual. And it's 100 in Denver, so we're glad not to be part of that heat wave. But anyway, I wanted to do a little spot on evaluating a high altitude garden today. So I had some things planted several weeks ago and want to take a look at how they're doing and why it's important to evaluate certain aspects of gardening for high altitude, especially sun exposure and dryness. There's a lot of things that are a little bit more of a concern up here because the factors are stronger. So, stronger. so I want to show you guys what the garden's looking like and it's very modest, so uh, don't get your hopes up for a big cornucopia of a garden because we're not quite there yet. But I've been making some progress in the garden, so I'll show you what's been, what I've been up to. Hey folks, I'm here in the garden and I've got uh, my floating row cover. This is the mesh that I'm going to be putting over my strawberry plants and garden plants right now to sort of protect them from the sun. This particular mesh blocks about 55% of the UV rays so things aren't baking all the time because this garden plot is full, full sun for probably 10 hours of the day. So it's a very hot um, climate, I guess you could say, for, for growing things. So that's one of the reasons why things don't do great at high altitude is because the sun is so strong that these floating row covers um, can really save the day and the mosquitoes are really bad right now. <laughs> so it's not too bulky of a material that you can't just lie it on top of your plants. I'm not trying to grow anything with a lot of vertical height, so this can go right on top of the strawberry plants because they're like a ground cover and um, this will do well um, being held down by little pieces of rebar. So that's what I'm gonna to use to secure the sides of the floating row cover. I laid it out here and I got the 25 foot length. I couldn't quite remember how long my garden bed was. So I've covered all but two of the strawberry plants. Luckily these two strawberry plants are doing really great and they aren't really getting too um, dehydrated from the sun so those two aren't getting covered but the other dozen of my plants are covered and then I've got eight pieces of rebar um, two you know two every about four feet or so and that's holding the row cover down and then this will be just wide enough I'm going to cover up my zucchini plant here because this could be getting dehydrated from the sun as well all of these other plants here are succulents and I think I've overwatered them, just transplanting them really quickly and they're kind of getting a little bit yellow. So that's a sign of overwatering. So I'm just gonna let those dry out. The rest of these are all drought tolerant plants. So I'm not really worried about them getting hit by the sun too much. Maybe my rhubarb at the very end there, but um, I think I'm gonna cover up the zucchini for now and we'll see how the strawberries do we'll, when I check on them tomorrow and see how much the mesh cover has helped them from staying, getting too dehydrated. One of the things I did in the last couple of weeks is put down some mulch on my walkway to kind of, well, give me a place to walk. And so I, we have a place where I can get some free mulch up at the community center. And I just got a small, you know, maybe four, five gallons of, of mulch. So not too, too much, but just enough to kind of see what it might look like. So one of the things that I planted is rhubarb. And that seems to be about the same size as it was when I planted it um, two weeks ago. It hasn't really grown much. I'm trying to keep on top of watering it. The leaves are a little rugged. You know, they're just, little, they're not chewed up, they're just a little bit damaged. But I hopefully, you know, that can take off a little bit. I don't think it's been too hot. It's definitely not been hot up here. So I don't think that's the problem. Maybe, maybe too cold, but I'm gonna keep up with the watering. These are the plants that I want to get into the ground today. They've been in pots for two weeks. I need to get them in. One is a cherry tree and one is a service berry tree. So that's my goal today is to get those finally in the ground. Here's the strawberries. Now I pulled off the floating row cover and they haven't really grown a lot. They don't look as in bad of shape as they did 
when um, I put them in the ground, but look, definitely getting some berries here. That's, you know, a medium to small size strawberry, but um, they definitely have fruit and some of them a little bit more dried up looking than others, but I'm trying to water them every day and actually today I'm gonna probably cover them back up because it's just so um, hot the next few days. There's a good patch of strawberries right here and um, those, you know, with a little bit of extra water, I think could plumpen up a little bit. All right, and something I did, it's hard to see. I can't really tell if I see anything coming up or not. I planted some spinach here between the, um, the rebar, this little box here between the rebar. I planted some spinach seed and uh, the other day I thought I saw some coming up, but um, that was, it's, it's only been like five days. So it's possible that there's no spinach just yet. But uh, the zucchini plant is leafing out. It's not ginormous, but it's definitely growing. And um, you know, it's not all wilted, so keeping up with the watering there. All of my succulents seem like they're taking hold. The hens and chicks and the, this was called dragon's blood, I think. Um, these were the ones I got at the plant sale. Uh, over here I planted kale. Uh, I think I've got some kale right here coming up. Yeah, I can see little spots of kale coming up. So the kale is emerging and over here I planted some mesclun greens and I planted it in horizontal rows. So uh, I can see some coming up right here. So not bad, you know what? I'll put a link to the video of the 12 superfoods that I wanted to grow up here. And um, right now we've got berries, we've got greens, um, I've got herbs up in my herb pots, but so far so good for a beginner garden up in the mountains. <laughs> we'll see how the greens turn out if that takes a couple of months for them to become edible, but just sort of an experiment and this is just kind of the majority of the ground that we have prepped. So Next year, I'll probably do some transplanting of a lot of these succulents and put them into more of like a rock garden. Um, but not too bad of a start. So today I'm gonna to cover up the strawberries with the floating row cover and then water all my ground covers over there because they look kind of dry and then get these pots in the ground. So right now, this is my watering contraption. I use a little five gallon cooler with a water jug in it and I carry it all the way over to the water hole on the side of the driveway. So I can't wait till we come up with a more efficient way to get water. <laughs> we have, uh, we're calling the well guy this week to come and drill for our well and see if we can get on the books. So um, that will be nice to have water on site and we can use hoses and everything. My wildflowers are coming up on the side of the driveway and I was thrilled to see this nice poppy come up. A little bee wants to land on it. It doesn't really look like one of my honeybees, but somebody's very excited to be in that flower. So nice poppies coming up. We've got a lot of yellow flowers and we had a lot of blue flowers, but I'm trying to see where they're at over here. This is all from a wildflower mix that I threw down last summer or last fall in like a haste. So I'm not sure what percentage of these flowers are from the wildflower mix and what is growing naturally, but considering this was all just dirt on the side of the driveway, I think a lot of these wildflowers are from the mix that I had. Oh, there's another pretty yellow one. So now that it's kind of end of June, we're seeing a little bit more of the wildflowers coming up. So let me walk up to the water hole and fill up my water container. It's in the other side of the dirt pile here. Is the water hole. And Lance dug this out so it would last longer and I could have access to water and dunk my gallon in it. I just get about four gallons. That's about all I can carry.
I picked a strawberry. I just, I don't know, I kind of want to see what it tastes like. So, don't tell Brian I'm having the first strawberry off the strawberry plants. Mmm. Oh my god, delicious. There's so much flavor, it's so small, but it, the strawberry flavor is like five of those giant strawberries you get at the grocery store. Mm. So, watered up the strawberry plants, and um, I can't get those two because my row cover is just a little bit too short, but I covered them all up so they don't dry out. Um, I would really like to try to water the spinach, so I'm going to start from the top and hopefully it can drain down because I think that maybe it's just a little bit dried up. And I'll use the rest of my water here to kind of water the greens down at the end. I guess one thing that's cool about growing green, living in the mountains, is that you can do things you can't do in most other parts of the country, and that's growing cool weather greens in June and July. So we'll have some salad greens hopefully in a month. Hopefully. <laughs> also here are our potatoes that we planted. So they're coming up in the pot and I'm next, after they get a couple more inches tall, I'm gonna recover them with more dirt. But happy to see that these did pretty well as well without tons of fuss or muss. So these are red potatoes in the making. This is the little collection of my little herb garden from Home Depot. So the mints here, lemon balm, cilantro's doing fantastic, rosemary and basil. So they're all hanging out, doing pretty good. I think the cilantro is looking the best in the, in the mints. They seem to have grown the most, but um, it's plenty to snip and add to dinner or drinks or what have you. So nice little selection there. So one of the reasons I hadn't put these in the ground yet, the service berry tree and the cherry trees, because I wasn't sure where the heck to put them. They both had the potential to grow into six foot trees and I didn't want it to crowd anything. And they both have the potential to do that the most if they have full sun. So I was thinking, I'm down here by the original solar ray plot where the cement is. Um, it's kind of at the edge of some aspens way down the hill here. So I think if I plant somewhere on the front of these aspens, they'll have plenty of sun all day long. So I'm thinking right about here, not next to the concrete, but maybe right to the left and maybe to the right, right here. I can pop these in and I might put the cherry right here because it's going to be really pretty flowers and I want to be able to see it from the house. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So what, something funny that happened while we've had all this rain, the grass really grew. It's up to my waist now. So Vigo's like buried in it right there. But I just took like one soaking weekend of lots and lots of rain. And like all this grass grew up wicked tall. So it makes it really fun to walk through when you have shorts on, nice and itchy. It might be really hard to dig, so. found a, a gopher hole. Maybe that's not good. What is it called? Nanking, che Nanking cherry. I have to mark this spot with a stake so nobody runs over it. Just in case. Yeah, we're gonna need some good watering on this, I think. Now it blends in with all the tall grass. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't keep it from getting sun. Whew, can't wait to carry down five gallons of water down this hill. All right, now time for the service berry. The pile of, there's a pile of wood down here and luckily there was a nice stake so I put it right next to the cherry tree so nobody drives the tractor over it if they come this way since it pretty much blends in with all the grass. <laughs> it's actually shorter than the grass next to it. Can't wait to see what this is gonna do. I hope it does something. Whew. Well, they don't look like much yet, but we'll see how they do next year and how they grow over time. Gosh, I better ever definitely need to stake this guy. So, service berry. What a, sh what a shrimp. He's only about 
16, 18 inches tall. So let's hope they grow. Plenty of sunlight and I will stay on top of the watering so that we can get some berries. And this is the clover that Brian planted on the septic field and it's coming up and this is with absolutely zero watering or tending. So pretty pleased that that's coming up as much as it is and probably by the time it flowers it will be at a good time in the summer when not much else is in bloom for the bees. I think we'll plant some more of this further down uh, the property so the bees will have more of a nectar source next year. So one thing I haven't mentioned about gardening up here is fertilizing and probably one of my first few videos back in February, I'll put a link to it, um, was about worm composting, making a worm bin out of kitty litter bins and um, composting your food scraps from the kitchen. So I literally have not even harvested or looked at what the worms have produced since February. Uh, one time I looked a few months ago and it was really dry so I didn't think they made anything. There's quite a few kitchen scraps in here but I haven't looked in the bottom bin to see what kind of liquid they've produced um, and to see what kind of castings they have. So what my plan is, because I don't have a fertilizing, fertilization um, source right now, I would like to plan to use horse manure because I have a source for that. Um, but it's a little bit late because I've already put things into my garden. I would like to uh, amend the soil with some fertilizer. So what I'm going to do instead is dilute what the worms have created and make a really rich nutrient dense water like a compost tea. So I'm going, that's what I'm, that's what my plan is. So I've already watered everything once today. And I think tonight, this evening, I'll do one more time because it's been very hot and dry today. And I'll go ahead and um, dilute the, tea, the compost tea. So let me, let's take a look and see what there is. The trick is getting these buckets apart. I think they're pretty well stuck together. So I'm gonna have to really wriggle. Okay, very stinky at the bottom but there's some brown liquid in there. It's very concentrated compost tea. So I'm gonna dilute that with a bunch of water and use this as my fertilizer for my plants in the garden. That's probably about maybe a pint, a cup. I don't know, maybe that's eight, 10 ounces of uh, compost tea. I'll dilute that with a couple of gallons and then water the strawberry plants, water the vegetables and the greens and then let's look inside the bucket. Now there's a bunch of fresh stuff on top and looks like some, maybe some mold growing. It's getting kind of moist in there. So I'm gonna throw down some paper, but let's look and see if we can find some worms. So I'm digging through some of this vegetable matter. So all this black stuff, a lot, some of the coffee grounds and all that, but I see some worms, the worm right there. Hey guy, we're still at it. They got lots of nutrients. All this black stuff is the castings from the worms and there's a bunch of worms down in there in the bottom. Um, so what I'm gonna do to maximize my resources is to dilute some of this castings in with the water to make a really, really nutrient rich, rich tea. And I'm gonna add that to the garden. So I'm going to use it as a tea instead of just adding all this black stuff. So there's a lot of worms in there. They're hiding from me. There's a lot of nutrients. It's looking a little wet. So I'm going to add some shredded up newspaper to this for the worms so they can kind of dry out and have um, better bedding. They just have a lot of food in here. So, so that's how things are looking right now. I'm pretty pleased with the gardening experience so far. I mean, we're not getting like a banner year with like really high yield vegetables or really wildly uh, rapid growing times but I think it's just it's a good learning experience and it's nice to just get really hands-on and really learn from from a new environment so I'm not a gardening expert by any means I'm sure people could give me tons of advice but it's just really fun to kind of get the kind of get the hang of a new thing so thanks guys for tuning in we've got more videos coming up about Brian's build progress and how the timbers are coming along and how they're almost ready to be joined so I think that might be our next video but thanks again for catching the catching the gardening update and hopefully learn some interesting tidbits and we'll keep you updated see you next time